Well, Fusion Church, what an incredible, incredible time of worship today. And I want to welcome you wherever you're at, joining us live online, or maybe it's on demand throughout the week. But listen, I, I just want to jump in right here at the start of today's message and say, come on, the church has left the building. If you missed last week's message, it was kind of part one, but the church has left the building and it left the building. I mean, we know that, correct? Like, <laughs> we know that. We're, we're not even allowed to gather in our locations across southern New Jersey. So yeah, we have left the building and you're wherever you might be today. But come on, let's engage on the platform that you're choosing to watch us. Let's comment if there's prayer needs. We want to be praying for you. In fact, we have intercessory prayer teams praying for you right now. And, uh, and so you can use that email that they're posting on the channels, prayer at fusionchurch.cc. Go ahead and send it to us. We'll get it right over to our intercessory, our virtual intercessory prayer teams that are praying for you. They're literally standing in the gap for you right now. And we love changed life stories here at Fusion Church. We share them when we're live together. So why would we not share changed life stories when we're virtually together? Someone uh, emailed this in to my wife, Pastor Danielle, uh, this week. She said, hey, Danielle, I'm a nurse practitioner in the ER at Shaw Medical Center. It's crazy, scary times, personally and professionally. Pastor Brendan's message really resonated with me and in me and has empowered, I love that, empowered me to share the gospel more with my team here in the ER. Can I pick up, listen to this, can I pick up some fusion Bibles, okay, can I pick up some fusion Bibles, some soap cards, okay, some pens and more information for my team. I know this is huge, come on church, press in wherever you might be, wherever you might be sitting or watching, I know I've been letting fear in, and I know others have as well. I want to share with them that we are more than conquerors. Please continue to keep us in prayer. And so last week, if you missed that message, I'm begging you, you got to watch it, because we shared a story of Jill, who works in the trauma unit in Atlantic City. And uh, man, that, that powerful Jill, thank you so much. First responders, thank you so much. Uh, critical people in our community, thank you so much. As we are on the front lines, you are on the front lines sharing love and hope. Man, hope dealers. I chose not to wear my hope dealer or my made for this shirt that I've loved wearing in this, this uh, season and really in this circumstance that we're in. And, and so come on, Change Life Story is inspiring us to go out and leave the building. The church, again, is not the full walls and we're finding this in this season. Now the title of today's message that I want to spend some time talking about is this whole title called For Such a Time as This. For Such a Time as This. The church has left the building for such a time as this. And guess what? Easter weekend is coming around. It is Holy Week that we're going to be rolling into over here, getting ourselves prepared. And I'm telling you, it's going to be a different Easter. Uh, this country has never celebrated Easter the way we're going to celebrate Easter. This country's never, uh, you know, done Good Friday the way we've done it. In fact, there are so many references to Passover, so many references to Shabbat, which is Sabbath, which is Friday at sundown until Saturday at sundown. Shabbat is what uh, the Jewish tradition would celebrate. We would know that as a Sabbath. Sunday would be our technical Sabbath. And, and you do that in homes with friends. And we're going to be doing that. And I'm going to give you some more information. But, but, but Good Friday services, Saturday services, Sunday services are going to be happening. And so fusionchurch.cc slash Easter is where you want to go, get all your resources, get all the times. We've got a lot of uh, times for you to join us. Good Friday service is going to be very different to Saturday and Sunday services. Good Friday service is going to have communion. And so uh, we're going to let you know this week how to be prepared with the elements of communion, the bread and the juice. You want to be able to, to have them available because I believe this church 
I believe this in regards to for such a time as this. I believe that in extraordinary times, in extraordinary times, we require extraordinary people to step up to the plate. And every single one of us would say, yes, it is extraordinary times that we are living in. That we have never been through something like this. And I believe that you today, you, yes, you, you are an extraordinary, extraordinary individual that God is counting on to step up. In times where it's tough, in times when I've had some freak outs Wednesday morning when we were doing our live prayer and worship. If you've not watched our Wednesday morning live prayer and worship, please log on 9 to 10. You can also get it archived on our Facebook channels. But, but I was just honest, Tuesday night, I, I, I kind of just had a little meltdown in my room. And I was, I mean, I just laid up in front of God. I just lay, I mean, I had some worship music going on. I just laid up because I believe God is calling me, God is calling you to be extraordinary people in this time. That He has given us faith and He's given us His Word and He's given us His Holy Spirit for such a time as this. And if I'm honest with you today, I was like, God, I've been in a lot of for such a time as this in my life. Like, I feel I've had to step up a lot of times. I mean, I remember when, when we first come, came to New Jersey, uh, Hurricane Sandy came through and we had to step up. And I've been through multiple financial crises. And growing up in South Africa, I'm like, God, how many times do I have to step up for such a time as this? And I kind of had my meltdown. So listen, if you've had a meltdown this week, if you've had an implosion, if you've had a temper tantrum, I want to say it's all right. It's all right. In fact, I want to say that even as I study the Word of God, I see some people that have some meltdowns. Even within the aspect of Holy Week, we will study Peter, a disciple of Jesus that has a meltdown. When he is accused of being a follower of Jesus, he denies it three times. And we would remember the scripture says the rooster crows and Peter denies Jesus. Peter had a meltdown. And you and I are, are able to have meltdowns, but we can't stay in the meltdown. We've got to get up and know that we've been chosen for such a time as this. And to be known that you are an extraordinary person in this season that God is asking to co-labor with in this region. In seasons like this, I love to go back to the book of Esther. In fact, if you've got your Bibles with you or maybe your app, you can click through it. But Esther chapter 4, verse 14, we'll read it and now give some context. Verse 14 says, For if you remain silent at this time, relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place. But you, yes, you and your father's family will perish. And then I love this, wherever you're at, let's read together. And who knows but that you have come to your royal position for such a time as this. But who knows that you have come to a royal position for such a time as this. Just as I read that young lady's testimony, she is in the ER at Shaw Medical. She is in that position for such a time as this. For the first responders that I've been talking to this week, for such a time as this, you can hear a story of a gentleman that is serving on the front lines in a very different capacity a little later on in this message. For such a time as this. Who knows that you have come to this position in southern New Jersey or wherever you may be watching. We've got people uh, all over the country and all over the world, some from the UK that were joining us last week, that you are in your country, you are in your province, you are in your state, you are in the place for such a time as this. I want to go as far to say you are in the street, you're in right now for such a time as this. So we would go, well, that's awesome. I mean, Esther, like she's in the Bible. She must have been incredible. And yes, Esther was incredible. In that moment, she was a queen. But I got to tell you, she wasn't always a queen. In fact, Esther at a point in her life was an orphan. So she had no mother and no father. She was uh, fathered or uh, she, her parents were, were, was her uncle, Mordecai, okay, uh, and her uncle had kind of taken her in. Uh, they they were, were slaves. They were exiles. They were not even in their homeland. And, and so in, in, in that tradition, everything was going against Esther. Everything. She had no family. She was an orphan. 
She was abandoned. She was a slave. She, she was exiled. I mean, the list goes on and on. And, and then, then there was a gentleman. His name was Haman. And Haman was out to destroy the Jewish nation, looking to destroy it. And Mordecai finds out about this plot, the uncle. And he goes to Esther, who now is the queen. But in that tradition, the queen was not able to go to the king unless the king requested the queen to come. And Mordecai goes and says, hey, 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 Esther, if you don't stand up right now, God's going to move over you and God's going to deliver his people. But I believe you, Esther, are in the very position as queen of the king for such a time as this. And church, I don't know where you're at today. I don't know the pain. I don't know the disappointment. I don't know the frustration. I don't know the loss of losing a job or being on furlough or being sick with COVID-19 or, or, or the insecurities that you might have, or like, I'm going to kill my kids, so I'm in serious trouble. Whatever you're going through, I would still say, I would still petition that you are here for such a time as this. Let's go back and let's reread chapter 4, verse 14 again. It says, for you, if you remain silent at this time, Relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place, but you and your father's family will perish. God's going to move over us. And who knows, but that you have come to a royal position for such a time as this. Now, this portion of Scripture, I've used that uh, so many times. There is so much depth that we don't even have an opportunity to to plumb the depths of this Scripture. But, But just briefly, I think what God's speaking to me and what God could be speaking to you today, and listen, I know there's a temptation to log off of this and go take care of your kids and go finish breakfast, go get another cup of coffee. But can I just say, I think in the next 15 minutes, God wants to show up in your life in the most powerful way. God wants to give you vision. God wants to give you hope. God wants to give you restoration. God wants to give you healing today. So just come on in the next 15 minutes buckle down and let's dig in because number one is this what got us here is not going to get us there what got us here won't get us there I mean imagine I'm trying to do church as the way I would do church well guess what church has changed the way you're doing life has changed in fact verse 14 says hey Esther if you remain silent at this time relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place And I love to say this, and you know this, I've said this for many years, but insanity is doing the same thing and expecting different results. Please, today, don't be insane. Don't do the same thing and expect different results. As a church, we cannot be insane. That's why I believe in the depths of my heart, the church has left the building. Our buildings are shut down. The lights are turned off. The key is turned off. We're trying to save every bit of a dollar that we can save right now and steward and get every bit of that dollar that you and I are giving sacrificially to the kingdom of God. It's not even going to buildings right now. It is going to help people in this community. And so again, let me be honest today. What got us here is not going to get us there. We've got to think different. And I pray in Jesus' name that God give you right now, wherever you're sitting and listening and watching, I pray that He give you a spirit of revelation, a spirit of ingenuity, a spirit of strength. Because insanity is doing the same thing and expecting different results. I believe God's asking us to think at a higher level. God was asking Esther to think at a higher level. And yet Mordecai was saying, Esther, don't stay silent. Now, what does the word silent mean to us here today? Silence could mean to you and I, not willing to change. So point I, not willing to change. That could be silence. Uh, It it could be uh, not willing to speak up. And, And then the third one could be not willing to step up. So let's review again. I, number one, not willing to change. Okay, we gotta have flexibility change. Number two, not willing to speak up. We talked about sharing the gospel last week, 
speaking up. Man, I'm so proud of so many of you in this community that were speaking up, sharing the gospel. Your story's the best story. You heard it. We're more than conquerors. God's given us a platform to overcome again. If you missed last week's message, you got to watch it. And then number three, not willing to step up. Esther needed to step up. Esther needed to speak up. Esther needed to change. She was comfortable being the queen. And we could be comfortable as a church, but we've chosen not to. We've chosen to step up. We've chosen to get a message of hope in the community. In fact, Henry Ford, the creator of Ford, Henry Ford was known for being obsessed with his black Model T Ford. In fact, you could order the car in any color you wanted as long as it was black. He was not willing to change. So Henry Ford said, you could order the car in any color you want as long as it's black. Not willing to change. Let's never be people. Let's never be kingdom-minded people that are not willing to change to think, how God are you impacting this region in this community? What are you doing in my heart? See, Esther, let's go back to Queen Esther. Esther had perceivably made it to the king's residence as queen. And yet there was a great threat to the destruction of her, the Jewish people. And she wanted to sit in silence and pretend that nothing is happening. Could I beg you right now, the fear that could be burrowing in your heart, the lies of the enemy and the insecurities, there is a tendency in humanity to want to circle the wagons. But we need to push out. We need to push out in love. We need to push out in faith. And we need to push out in hope. So number one is this is that we can't keep on doing the same things. That's insanity. Number one is this. What got us here is not going to get us there. Listen, I'm going to do a reprise on the message. I'm going to come back to this point in a second. But here's this next thought. The next thought is this, is faith always needs to triumph over fear. Come on, say that in your homes together. Faith always needs to triumph over fear. In fact, if you're typing on a platform that you're on, just type that right there. Faith always needs to triumph over fear. Come on, some of us need to believe that in our hearts and lives. Faith, come on, that's how I type, correct? I type like, I don't type like that. Are you kidding me? I'm like, I'm, I don't know. I'm like one of those like Halloween, like, you know, dinosaurs that you blow up and sees you walking during your neighborhood. Like, I don't type like that. Are you okay, so I'm going to distill. Faith needs to try. Uh, anyway, how, how, how do you do that? Faith needs to triumph over fear. Because listen, and this, was, this message I preached two, two weeks ago uh, about how do you have faith in uncertain times? How do you walk on water in uncertain times? And the link is right there in the notes. They're dropping the link. Go ahead and save the link. Don't get distracted. I'm watch. Yes, you. You. I'm watching you. Don't get it distracted. You're like, I need to go watch that message. On YouTube, save later. Okay. But right now, right now, faith, 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 faith always needs to triumph over fear because fear is a very bad motivator. Let me be honest. Fear is a very bad motivator. Fear is a motivator, but it's not the best motivator. Love is the best motivator. Love is the best motivator. In fact, let's look at that scripture, 1 John chapter 4, verse 18. It's been shared a lot during the season with churches, but it says there is no fear in love. But, and I love this, I love this translation, but perfect f- love drives, drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment and the one who fears is, I want us to slow down, the one who fears is not made perfect in love. You as a Christ follower You are made perfect in love. There has been a deposit of love. There has been a deposit of faith in your life. And and so love drives out. Let let me rewind to Tuesday night when I had my my meltdown. Okay, just just being honest, correct? Let me lead in transparency. I had a meltdown. Um, And... And, and, but, but in the midst of the meltdown, I've been a Christ follower long enough that I knew in the midst of my meltdown, I needed to encounter love, the love of God, the Spirit of God. I often do that in worship. So I play worship music, and, uh, and the presence of God is there. And when the presence of God is there, the presence of God has to drive out fear in Jesus' name. Because here's the reality. I'm human just like you, Correct. And so sometimes in my humanity, I allow fear in. But what I know, I need to drive fear out. Now, so let me say this again. Faith always needs to triumph over fear. 
Fear is a very bad motivator. It's not the best motivator within our life. Faith and love is what pleases God. The Bible says faith pleases God. And so as Christ followers in this season, we need to build our faith. That's what I talked about two weeks ago about walking on water in uncertain times. What does faith look like? Faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not yet seen. So what does it look like within our life? So th- this week, it's Holy Week, okay? Easter is coming up. you got these digital cards that are available on any of the platforms that you want or fusionchurch.cc slash Easter is where you want to go. But starting Monday morning at 6 a.m., I'm going to build your faith. Yes, you heard it, 6 a.m. Some of you are like, 6 p.m.? Did he say 6 p.m.? No, no, 6 a.m. Because you're going to help me and I'm going to help you. And so right down, uh, right there on the different platforms, on our screens is the Zoom platform ID. Take a picture, screen clip it, write it down. Follow me on social media, the church on social media. We're going to put it out there. But 6 a.m., Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, uh, 6 a.m., I'm going to be leading a Zoom Bible study through the soaping of Holy Week. So scripture, observation, application, and prayer. We have that available to us. And so much of it is is through Luke. And so for 30-ish, 40 minutes, uh, you can log on. And why am I doing this? Because there is fear that is crippling many of us in this community and this region. And so the best thing, including myself, so the best thing that I can do is get my tail out of bed, okay, get some discipline going, and you can hold me accountable, and I'm going to hold you accountable, and we're going to log on to Zoom with that ID, and I'm going to lead it, and we're going to just dissect it, and we're going to pray together. We're going to spend some time having Bible study together. Why? Because this coming Holy Week, we're going to drive fear out of your life. We're going to drive anxiety out of your life. We're going to drive the pits of hell Out of your life because you've allowed it. I've allowed it to come in. And according to the word of God, we are going to drive it out. Again, let's look at 1 John 4, 18. It says, there is no fear in love. So this week, Holy Week, 6 a.m. in the morning, and we will replay it. It will be on demand for you for the rest of the day if you can't get up at 6. But come on, get that cup of coffee, that Keurig, and join me because we're going to drive it out. Just as the scripture says, we're going to drive that fear out out in Jesus name we're going to send fear back to hell in Jesus name why because there is a vision of faith that God has given us in fact numbers chapter 13 verse 6 tells me the following it says Joshua son of Nun and Caleb son of Jephna who were among them had explored the land tore their clothes okay I'll share the background in a second here and in verse 7 said and to the entire Israel assembly the land we passed through and we explored is exceedingly good There's a lot of fear in New Jersey right now. There's a lot of fear in the United States. But I want to say that God is good. I want to say it's exceedingly good right now in the presence of God. Verse 8, if the Lord is pleased with us, He will lead us into that land, a land flowing with milk and honey, and will give it to us. Man, that's why I'm doing these Zoom meetups at 6 a.m., because guess what? We need some faith in our households. We need some faith in our families. And the Word of God says that if we would have faith just like Joshua and Caleb had faith, that He is going to lead us into that land. He's going to lead us. And I'm thankful that even this platform today, this ability to come in via video stream was made available because people four or five years ago had faith to see what God was doing. That Fusion Church four or five years ago gave sacrificially to invest so that in this season, and I remember there were critics and there were haters. Why are you doing that, Pastor? Why are you investing in that, Pastor? Why you got those lights, Pastor? Why you got those video cameras, Pastor? Why? Because God knew that there would come a day when hundreds and thousands of churches didn't have the ability to have technology, but there were Joshua's and Caleb's in Fusion Church that saw what God wanted to do and they gave sacrificially so that we could build these platforms that now right now today in this moment you are a beneficiary of the platforms of sacrificial giving of this church and so let me say to you today that are blessed 
Let me say to you that God is continuing to use you financially. There is great need in this community. But for some of you today, God is blessing you supernaturally. Would you allow this church in the giving, the sacrificial giving of your tithe and your offering to be beneficiaries to those in the community that have need and to those of you that have approached me this week and given sacrificially, thank you so much. To those that we've been able to bless this week and help this week and love on this week, what a privilege to do it because people years ago saw spiritually what God was going to do. Verse 9 of, Josh, of Numbers 13 says, only do not rebel against the Lord. Don't get lazy is what I felt the Spirit of God speaking to me. Get up, Brennan. Get up at 6 a.m. Now, no, normally I'm, I'm, I'm up a little earlier, but man, man I, I'm not going to the gym anymore. It's, it's tough. And so let's, let's not rebel against the Lord and, and, and do not be afraid of the people of the land, this coronavirus, COVID-19, because we will devour them. And then this is it. Their protection is gone. I love this. But the Lord is with us. I am here today, church, on divine assignment to tell you the Lord is with you. The way we got here is not the way we're going to move forward. We're going to come against fear with faith, but the Lord is with us. What does it say? Do not be afraid. Come on. Do not be afraid. The Lord is with it. I love that two points there. The Lord is with you today, number one. And number two, do not be afraid. The Lord is with you and do not be afraid. In fact, here's a story right now of a young man that in a different way is on the front lines of the battlefield helping love on first responders. Howdy Fusion, it's Tanner here, working out Wawa. I am what you would call an essential person now. However, I'm only assisting the essential person now, whether that is EMS, paramedics, cops, firefighters, doctors, nurses. If you know any of those people, hit them up and tell them how awesome they are and that you're praying for them. My story is the best story because I get to share the hope of Jesus to people every day. Whoever I encounter, I'm always smiling. I'm always saying, have a great day. I'm always saying something that is uplifting them because I know that this time is dark. And as a church, we are called to be the light of the world. So as I have opportunities to just share the hope that Jesus has put in my life, I'm hoping that people's day will be made. People's day will get better just because of a smile, because of a kind word. I challenge you, if there's someone that you need to text who is going through the ringer right now, text them and tell them that, you're, that you love them, that you're praying for them, and that things are going to be okay. Tana, man, bro, I love you. Thank you so much. You're on the front lines now. Tana serves in our student ministry. Tana serves in, in, in our worship team. Uh, Tana is an all-around amazing servant. But guess what? He is on the front lines, different way, but front lines. He's essential, and he is sharing the love. And if you've met Tana, Come on, you know, he's oozing Jesus. He's oozing the love of God. And so come on, community. Tanner, right now, what brought him here is not going to take him there. He's thinking different. He's elevating his thinking. He's pressing into what God is doing. He's recognizing this fear. He's pushing it out. He's bringing in the love of God. He's bringing in boldness. He doesn't want to be a part of the Israelites that can't see what God's doing. He wants to be a Joshua and a Caleb. He wants to see what God's doing. He know God is with him. God is moving with him. And God is telling him not to be afraid. And let's take that and allow that to happen in our lives. So here's the application. Here's the application. Are you operating in fear or silence in any place in your life when you should be walking in faith? This week. This holy week, come on, church, come on, wherever you're at in the world, let's be walking in faith. So let's do a reprise, musical uh, word to go back, you know, so let's reprise, let's go back. What got us here won't get us there. Say it together, what got us here won't get us there. Verse 14 of Esther, for if you remain silent at this time, relief and deliverance from the Jews will arise from another place. You are here for such a time as this. The church has left the building, and you, yes, you that I'm talking to today, you are here in this area, in your job, in your place, on your street, in your house, in your department, virtually online for such a time as this. So a great response is required in this region. I believe as the pastor of this church, a great response 
requires, so a great need requires a great response. A great need requires a great response. And, and here, here, this, this is what I came up to this week. Here's the conclusion. We can close this message with this, okay? Is we need this week, going into Easter, we need to get as many of you to start leading virtual groups, V groups. As many of you to start leading V groups so that Easter weekend we can launch these V groups, virtual groups, and that starting the Monday after Easter, we would literally, my prayer is to have hundreds of V groups happening around literally the world because you could log on. And, and again, I, I'm leading ahead this week by doing this 6 a.m. Zoom to take us through the steps of Holy Week. Okay, so I'm going to lead. But I was thinking this week, I spend about 10 to 15 hours a week developing messages. Okay, 10 to 15 hours a week developing the messages that we can communicate what God is speaking to me and what I believe God's speaking to this region. But in this season of great need, it requires a great response. And, and so I, our staff and our leaders are shifting what they do to get as many leaders leading virtual groups. Now, if that's one of you today, there is an opportunity right now. And the, and, and the graphic, the text, you can simply text lead to the number on the screen. Just text lead to the number that is on your screen and all of our campus hosts are dropping those in the chats, but simply text the word lead to the number on the screen, or there's a bitly short link that is coming up on the screen. Because we need, here's the vision, we need as many V group leaders as possible. And so simply submit your name on that form, because a great need requires a great response. See, what got me here is not going to get me there. And what got me here is 10 to 15 hours of message prep a, a week to be able to do it in the services Saturday and Sunday. But that's changed. And, and so I'm going to shift. Now, the messages are not going to be worse because, come on, God is speaking to me like never before. I have piles and piles and piles of messages that God is speaking to me. But in this great need of a season, a great response of faith to drive out fear is required. And so that's what we're going to start doing. So if you, and I'm asking whoever you are today, that you would simply text lead to the number that you have, or you would go to that short link that's available in all of the different platforms and discussions, and you would simply say, hey, I want to lead a group. And we will give you the training and the platform, the Zoom platform. The church is covering the cost of the Zoom platform to be able to lead these groups because there is great fear. But when there is great fear, there is great love that will drive out in Jesus' name the great fear. So what, what am I asking today? Number one is this. We need to continue to exercise faith over fear this week and onwards, okay? So faith grows from the Word of God. We, we want to uh, get into V groups, not just lead V groups, but after Easter weekend, jump on some V groups, okay? Uh, number two, what got you here is not going to get you there. So here's my challenge to you today. Become a V group leader. Yes, you you, you might go, well, I'm an orphan. Guess what? Esther was an orphan. I I'm messed up. Guess what? Esther was messed up. I don't have it. Esther got all the excuses, but she became the deliverer of her people for such a time as this. You can do that. And so text lead uh, to the number on your screens to be able to lead the V group. And then number three, join me daily. Come on, as hundreds of you, join me daily at 6 a.m. Come on, let's get back on track with what God is doing, especially for Holy Week. I believe Holy Week has a catalyst to launch you supernaturally into the next spiritual time. Here's a closing scripture that I believe God has given me to close this time before we pray. In Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2, it says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. Man, I know there's a lot of things hindering us right now. But God says, throw it off in Jesus' name. And let us run with perseverance the race that is marked out for you today. This is verse 2. Fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and the perfecter of your faith. For the joy set before Him. This is going to happen in Holy Week. For the joy set before Him, He endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Verse 3. Come on in your homes or wherever you're watching or listening. Let's read together. Verse 3. Consider Him who endured such opposition from sinners so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. 
today, do not grow weary. Do not lose heart. God is for you. You are victorious in Jesus' name. Come on, let me pray for you. Father, right now, as we've shared this word, I pray that you encourage us. I pray that you fill us. I pray that you give us mercy, great understanding. Equip us because the church has left the building. I pray this and I ask this in Jesus Christ's name. You know what? If you're there in your homes and you today want to make a decision to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I want to pray this prayer with you right now as we finish. It's going to be on the screen in front of you. Dear God, I'm praying this prayer because I know that I have done wrong. I repent and I ask you to forgive me of my sin. Thank you that Jesus died so I could repair my relationship with you. Help me live with you as Lord of my life and focus on the plans that you have for me. Let's read together. I believe in my heart. I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord and now He is Lord and Savior. Amen. Church, you are here for such a time as this this week. God bless you. We're going to go back into worship for one more song. God bless you.